Well, good morning, guys. Playing with 300 blackout this morning. I'm just prepping some brass. I'm converting some 223 to 300 blackout. Thought I'd take you along, show you my current process. Now, this is going to change. We're evolving this as we go along. I played with 300 blackout off and on for years. I've loaded for it. I've converted a little bit of brass, but nothing that amounts to anything. So we're uh, we're working a we're redoing a platform top end and uh, I thought I'd set up to produce a little more a little more brass for it a little more ammo and things like that see if we can keep costs down and um, just utilize some of the stuff we've got so I'm just going to go over the process that I'm using right now to form brass into 300 blackout and that's as far as I'm going now I will go back and do some stuff on some of the equipment that I've set up I've shot a little bit of stuff previously and I may um, go back and pick part of that and, and go ahead and upload it in some of these videos but I'm going to kind of concentrate on 300 blackout and the way I'm producing ammo for it at this point in time and the way I'm developing loads for a for a new semi-automatic top end platform gun so uh, now the little disclaimer here is if I'm working a bolt gun and setting up ammo for it my process is different than this so some of the stuff guys are going to disagree with me and say, oh, yeah, you, you got to do this. You shouldn't be doing that. You need to be doing things this way and stuff. Everybody's got their own way of doing stuff, and I have no problem with that at all. So you do what works best for you, and um, your processes will evolve and develop into what you want them to be. Now, when I'm playing with this stuff, I'm doing it for my personal guns. I'm not having to do it for customers or anything like I have years past. So... I can take my time, I can waste a lot of time on it. Now there's some stuff I'm not doing here right now that I may do later on just for brass longevity like uh, annealing cases, you know, I'm not going to anneal. Another thing is turning necks, you know, guys say, well, if your neck's too thick, you've got this problem and that problem, and those are true, but at this stage of the game, all I'm doing is working for functionality and on a top end like this, I want it to function with whatever I feed through it. So. To me, if we've got a thicker neck or a thinner neck, uh, that can affect accuracy, that can affect pressure. There's lots of stuff that that can affect, but I want it to function irrespective. So those are my primary goals at this point in time. So anyway, this is just what I'm doing. I'm just going to give you a quick overview because I'm playing this morning. I'm going to, I want to get some stuff polishing up and um, keep the day rolling along. So anyway, I'll just bring you down here to the bench, show you the way I've started out with 223. I skipped a lot of steps that I'm not showing here, but it's standard stuff that's been around. So, anyway, 223 brass, take it. I'm processing it. I'm depriming it. I wet tumble everything. So, um, you know, I've been down the road of, of tumbling with dry media for years and years. And here a few years ago, I switched to wet tumbling. That's the only way I process brass. Now, is it the fastest way to do things? No, it's certainly not. But I like the results better. So, anyway, standard 223. Now, the brass that I'm using here, and I've got a a few more than 100 rounds here. I don't know exactly how many, but, um, and this is, this is range brass. You know, I've got a couple of tubs that have just got 223 brass in it. Part of it's been shot multiple times. The majority of this stuff is once fired. So I've gone through universal decapper in my single stage RCBS. I popped the primers out. That's all I'm interested in doing there. From there, I've taken them and I've swaged them. I'm using the Dillon swager. Uh, this has got my little conversion on it. So it's, you know, quick and easy. So I went ahead, gotten rid of any military crimps. Part of this brass already had the crimp swaged out of them or removed one way or another. Part of it's commercial stuff that didn't have a crimp. There again, it's, it's range droppings. Now, most of it is from one lot. It's been once fired, but it's not all that brass. So first thing I'm doing is I'm taking care of primers and primer pockets. That's one of my earlier swager conversions, and I've made some changes to it since then, the ones that I offer for sale. So then I've gone to the little Harbor Freight. This was, a, this was um, off of Amazon, and I will throw a link to it there. It was more, you know, it was a few bucks more than the uh, Harbor Freight saw. They're exactly the same. Um, not a bit of difference between them. The, you know, this one's orange, where now the, the ones you get from Harbor Freight are black. I think at one time they had orange ones. I 3D printed out a case trimmer, and this has been a good starting point for me. I'm not real happy with this. I'll be setting up the CNC and machining out a, a um, new 
um, cutoff jig for it. There's some other jigs out there that are being manufactured already. I'm not going to deviate too far from that. I've got a couple other little ideas that I may or may not incorporate into them or try and incorporate them when I draw them up in CAD. But um, I'm going to do my own little jig. So this will change. And I just mounted it on a little board so I can hang it on the wall. You know, it, it already hangs in the reloading room like that. Whether it stays that way or not, I don't know. But right now, space is still a constraint. So I do that but simple and easy you know it sets up you you set your case in there and cut them off so anyway that's that's where we're at right now now some of this brass was um was just once fired stuff so it hadn't been cleaned or anything and part of it i just grabbed out of my bucket so part of it has already been cleaned but a lot of it is just once fired stuff so it hasn't been really cleaned or anything. I didn't mind cutting it off that way and, and swaging primer pockets and stuff, but to run them through dies, I'm going to go ahead and tumble these now. So that's where we're, that's the stage we're at right now. So I wanted to bring you up to, up to date on that. So from here, they go into my wet tumbling drum and uh, they go in there with a little bit of lemon shine and a little bit of soap. And I'm using stainless pins so i gotta go in fill this up the rest of the way with water and get some lemon shine and some soap and i'll tumble this for an hour and then they go into my little dryer my dehydrator that i dry brass with and from there they're ready to go from there so after i get that done we'll come back we'll take them back and i'll run them through the um through the trimmer and form them at the same the same time so we got our brass tumbled dried to the point it is now and um now I'm actually just going to throw some lube on it. I only need one of these, one of these uh, tubs for right now, because I'll feed it out of this out of this bag. And what I've got is just my little homebrew mix of lube that a lot of guys are using with liquid lanolin and some alcohol. And we're just going to throw these in here. This is the way they look as we start off. And what I'm going to do is just get them lubed up. I'm going to go ahead and run them through this sizer once and trim them, the trimmer, which actually forms them and, and probably sizes them sufficiently. But what I'm going to do is uh, when I've got them lubed after I've run them through the first time, I'll go ahead and deburr them by hand, case mouths, and then I'll go ahead and run them through the standard sizing die. And I'm running small base sizer dies for usually anything that's feeding semi-automatic. And uh, once I've done that and sized them down there, why, then I'll polish them again. And I'll go ahead and polish them through a full cycle, run them through for an hour with uh, lemon shine and a fair amount of soap to get that lanolin off of it. Then I'll rinse them off and do one more, one more half hour cycle with just some um, lemon shine rinse or the equivalent of it and, the, uh, and a little more soap. And then they go back, dry them again, and then they're ready to load. So, give them a good squirt and shake through here. And that'll give them plenty of Plenty of lube to do their thing. So we'll just run a few of them through. Now, um, and I'll go over everything more. This is a Lyman die that I've modified to fit in the, in the Dillon trimmer and you have to modify them for them to work. So here's the process. <laughs>
Okay, so while um, those are slippery, the ones that were really stiff going through, those were normal brass. The majority of the rest of it looked to be PMC, and uh, it went through quite a bit easier. So normal brass is definitely heavier through the through the wall thickness and everything. So now while these are still lubed, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna deburr the heads of them. I'll throw them back in the plastic bag and just shake them up just to pick up a little more lube. And then I'm just gonna run them through my regular sizer die. So let me grab a deburring tool here. The 3D printer is actually hard at work printing up a power deburring tool. So just a quick little project. So anyway, they'll size up. Look like that. And uh, then, like I say, we'll run them through the run them through the sizing die one more time, and uh, then we'll tumble them again. This is what our brass looks like. Now I went ahead and uh, finished trimming them here. While they still had lube on them, I added a little more lube to them, just threw them back in the bag, and then I ran them through a sizer die, through a small base sizer die for blackout. There again, anything semi-automatic, I normally will run through a um, run through a small base sizer die. These are what they look like after they've come out of the, been tumbled through the full cycle. I tumble them for an hour and uh, then clean them and tumble them again for another half an hour. Start off the first one with lemma shine and soap. Second one gets uh, some lemma shine rinse or just some dishwasher rinse and a little more soap. And that's the way they come out. Then they go into my little dehydrator that I use for a dryer and they come out looking like that. So lengthwise, there's a little bit of movement after they're full length sized again the second time. Now this is normal brass. It comes out, it, and I've measured several. Um, these come in about 377 or 367, 368, which is, is um, 368 is the max length, 1368. So the normal being a heavier brass, which we talked about earlier when I was sizing them, they come out a little bit different. The PMC and a couple of the other ones, what's this one? This is a PMC. I noticed they came out a little bit shorter. They come out about 364 is about where they're at. So a little more movement in them, a little bit thinner brass than the normal brass. Um, there again, am I going to worry about stuff even if it's a little bit short under that 363 measurement? I'm really not because it hasn't been fire formed yet. So, and the reality is we can do all this, all this work on this brass to run them through a semi-auto and there's going to be a certain amount of loss. So, you know, I mean, figure your, figure your return that you're going to get on the amount of uses you're going to get out of the brass. Now, if you're shooting at your own range or a place where you can police your brass really easily and it's all falls in the same place, why then it's going to, going to be a little bit easier. But, um, you know, if you're out in the sticks, banging away a few rounds, you're going to have a, you're going to have some loss for your, for your, uh, of your brass. So all the time you've invested in it may not be worth everything you, all the time you put into it. Anyway, that's the way I form brass, or that's the way, that's my current method for forming 300 blackout from um, 223 or 556. So it will evolve a little bit more. There's going to be some changes made. You know, I'll link in the description the stuff I'm using to this if you're interested in it or at least want to go look at it. Um, there are some, some trade-offs and, and some things that have to be done if you're doing it. This, uh, this Lyman die that I'm running with my Dylan Swager, uh, Lyman builds a carbide die, fairly more expensive. Don't invest your money in that because they have to be modified and it's a, quite the quite the hassle to modify your carbide die that would to the extent that would make it work. So that's a waste. On a steel die, I did quite a bit of work on this die and I'll go over that a little bit more. There's I, I worked the inside of it and I worked the the bottom side of it too. So it's been worked on from both sides and, and there's some lathe work that has to be done on it and some polishing. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. If you've got the capabilities to do that, then they're gonna work out fine on a Dillon trimmer. But um, Otherwise, you're, uh, from what I've found so far, otherwise you're waiting on a Dillon, Dillon dock for your Dillon trimmer. So anyway, I'll go over all of that stuff a little bit at a time. And if somebody's interested in something in particular, leave it in the comment section for me below. And uh, I'll be setting up a, a press and I'll be setting up a reloading setup because 
I'm kind of starting my son off with with some stuff and uh, I've got I think virtually everything he's going to be needing needing to get started with the exception of maybe some dies but anyway there's a hundred and some rounds of 300 blackout cases I'm very happy with those there's no problem at all as near as I can tell once we start working on them a little bit we'll find out guys will talk about neck thickness there again at this point in time I'm not worried about neck thickness on them um, the rifle needs to, to cycle everything that I feed into it if it's 300 blackout so we'll uh, we'll make adjustments as necessary anyway hopefully you find this a little bit interesting comments suggestions leave them in the comment section for me below guys and as always thanks for taking the time to watch